when I started my PhD uh, here at CMU, uh, there was a brand new project on the street uh, for developing small, lightweight excavators. That was right around the time that Astrobotic was developing its mission manifest as well. Um, so there was just this opportunity for alignment there uh, where we have uh, the development of um, lightweight robotic excavation technology um, and the development of missions uh, that are designed for utilizing the moon's resources and accessing the water that's buried there um, and accessing the regolith that can be uh, turned into uh, oxygen or water or even uh, rocket fuel. The solution we use um, to operate with low forces um, that are the requirement when you're operating lightweight is a bucket wheel. This bucket wheel uh, has several small buckets that dig continuously one after the other as opposed to using one large bucket which as you try to force into the ground the dirt will be filling up that bucket from the front and that dirt that's in that bucket um, is going to resist more dirt entering into the bucket. So the forces of um, pushing a large, say, loader blade or a dozer blade into regolith uh, are continuously increasing and you'll very quickly hit up against resistance and it'll stop your machine. But if you're operating with um, something like a bucket wheel, uh, each small bucket just takes uh, a bite and then exits the dirt. And then it's time for the next bucket to enter in and do the cut. And each time each bucket interacts, it's a whole new interaction. And you're not dealing with this accumulation of soil that's uh, creating additional resistances for uh, your digging. Um, so by using a bucket wheel, we can keep the excavation forces really low and thus uh, operate lightweight. Excavating on the moon is most similar to open pit mining here on Earth. These are mines that start at the surface and dig pits um, directly uh, down into the ground as opposed to digging tunnels uh, and then operating underground. Uh, there are open pit mines uh, for coal and uh, other resources here on Earth. One of the main differences is that uh, because there are no restrictions on the mass of your excavator, open pit mines are operated with enormous machinery here on Earth. One of the largest machines on Earth is actually a bucket wheel excavator. Um, and it's used to dig in these open pit mines. It's so big that it's mounted on a crane, which then um, has a mobile platform. So weight is a product of mass and gravity. On the moon, uh, everything weighs one-sixth of what it does here. So if you start with something that has low mass and then bring it to the moon, then you're really getting to a point where you don't have a lot of weight. And that weight is typically what excavators here on Earth use to dig. They use it to develop the traction they need to move through the material, and they use it um, to create the forces to really push their tools into the ground and pick up that material. We don't have the luxury of just being able to build a bigger robot and have a lot more weight uh, for doing the digging tasks on the moon. Uh, and uh, that requires a radical rethink of how we actually pick up this material, how we um, interact with it and collect it and deliver it. One of the reasons we're developing this robot and this research program is to get a firm handle on uh, how capable we can make these systems today. Uh, we believe that we may be able to uh, build a robotic excavator that can process hundreds, perhaps even thousands of kilograms of regolith per day on the moon. One of the things that uh, we've seen in uh, space exploration is the process of building on things that we've demonstrated already works. If you look at the Sojourner rover and compare it to the Mars Exploration rovers and then compare it to the Mars Science Laboratory rover, um, 
the basic configuration has remained the same. Um, we've scaled up and the capabilities have scaled up, but that initial design, which was proven to work on Mars, was then used to uh, develop the, the next phase of capability, uh, but keeping with the same general design. And uh, the bucket wheel excavator, the lightweight robotic excavator we're developing, is being developed with this in mind, that it would be uh, very capable over a whole range of uh, weights and operating uh, sizes. So we start with this small lightweight excavator, um, and as we build up, we utilize the technology that was developed um, and build upon that. For the foreseeable future, I think uh, we're going to be building specialized robots, robots that dig will focus on digging, uh, robots that want to travel down steep cliffs will we'll focus on that. Eventually we may arrive at uh, robots that are universally versatile, um, but thus far the best example of a universally versatile um, system is the human and the human astronaut. Um, so eventually um, I think uh, humans need to go and explore space as well. Um, and the robots are there to pave the way and provide support while they're there. What I'd really like to see is lightweight robotic excavators that are delivering regolith to a processing plant that is turning them into resources that enable uh, further exploration whether it's uh, further exploration by other robots uh, on the moon or Mars or by humans. Um, one of the most interesting things, um, I think, is developing uh, human outposts, uh, uh, first on the moon, eventually long-term, perhaps on Mars. Earth has always been our home, and it will continue to be our home. Um, but... At some point, I truly believe we need to step outside our current boundaries. Throughout history, uh, humans have always explored. We explore to search for resources. We explore to um, search for new places to live. And I just don't believe that with the vastness of our solar system and the universe, um, that we are uh, meant to be uh, perpetually confined uh, to where we are. If we remain a species confined only to Earth um, in the extremely long term, that's not a sustainable approach. But I think if, if we're interested in humans uh, as a species and um, conscious life existing um, in the long term, uh, we need to think about uh, moving beyond uh, being just on one single speck in the entire universe.